to um, Dark Bay Pirate Radio. We are once again coming at you from What the Hell Con. Um, I am joined by, I am your host, Stevie Bouchamp. I am joined by my lovely co host for the moment, Teresa Bain. And what's exciting about this, you just saw the, uh, you saw Drew and I talking. That was, last year was Drew's one year anniversary on the show and also, you know, coming, uh, going to cons and stuff. Well, this also happens to be the one year anniversary of Teresa being on the show. So Davey says, but he's probably right. Yes, I am. Okay, I believe you. In this one, since I'm right. So, um... So, I mean, how is your fame propelled from being on the show? Well, the phone never stops ringing. Yeah, yeah. And David Moff is always asking me to, like, for my advice on, like, what I should do. He wants me to write the 50th anniversary, and I told him just no way. Just, I do not have the time to do it. I am way too busy catching up on uh, episodes of Futurama. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> no spoilers, but it's going to be awesome, and you're all going to cry happy tears. So, um... <laughs> That was awesome. Um, it is true. It's all true. I would never lie. I love you, Paul. No, but um, it has been great having you on the show. Most, mostly, we've only had you on for uh, panel panel ones, mm -hmm. and then we did the, me and Drew did the special interview with you at Maze. That was like fun. That, that was a that was a lot of fun with you. I had a little um, dialect on my knee the whole time. So that was a sort of a Easter egg that she just gave you. Mm -hmm. So you need to go back and watch that. And the canine. I had a dialect in the canine. It's a Forbidden Love episode. So, um, speaking of Poland. Yes. So, strangest thing. Mm -hmm. After What the Hell Con, mm -hmm. our Polar viewership dropped drastically. I watched it drop in the charts. It did. It then, dropped a lot. Then all of a sudden, within these past couple of months, Poland is number five again. Thank you, Poland. So, um, what country do you think we should uh, have an international incident with now? Oh, definitely New Zealand. New Zealand? Absolutely New Zealand, yes. They How? Um, well, we can talk about the fact that I'm not a fan of Lord of the Rings and that it was largely filmed there. And that, um, for the most part, it's overrated country. <laughs> It's a mountain chain with so, beach. So do they understand monetary units over there? I do currency? believe they have a currency, but I think it is a country, sadly, like from Sidewalks. That's just a personal opinion based on having watched every single episode of Xena Warrior Princess and Hercules the Legendary Journey with Kevin Sorbo, not the like young kid who's supposed to be Hercules. So um we'll actually talk a little bit about Doctor Who here. What have you thought what have you thought overall? Because I've not talked to you about this. We've had discussions while we're at, at, at your home uh, during um, meetings over the uh, musical adventures RPG and the rock rock about, you know, season seven of Dr. Good. I, I was not a fan of it. Now, here's, the reason is, is because I thought it was a little slapsticky. I thought that, you know, every, I enjoyed every single episode that I watched of it. However, looking back, even like 20 minutes after the episode aired while I'm watching like a rerun of um, uh, Copper, um, I felt like, I don't know. Like, it was sort of Disney-esque, sort of Sesame Street, very childlike, very, yeah. like, Doctor Who light. And then looking back at the whole story arc, very immature. The plot line was very, I just didn't like anything about it, and I was just not a fan of the, of the last episode of, with, you know, the whole Rory, Amy, oh, Weeping Angels, boom, you Statue of Liberty, Weeping Angels. Yeah, I know. I mean, I have to agree with you. I, I really did not, I mean, I like 7A. I did not love 7A like I would have, like I would have wanted. I wanted to. I wanted to yeah. love it because the pawns were leaving. I really wanted to love it. I wanted to embrace it. I wanted to miss Rory and Amy. Yeah. And I don't. I'm glad they're gone. Um, it made me not miss them. But I'll say this much. I was very happy to see that it got darker and more serious in the Christmas special. Oh, absolutely. I'm, yeah. always, I'm always a huge fan of the Christmas episodes. I always cry in the Christmas episodes. Oh, I think this was the best Christmas episode It was maybe me. one of the two best. One of the two best. What's the other one do you think is really I good? I like the one where, oh, I, of course I don't know the name of it because I'm not an uber nerd fan. I'm just I'm just like a, a human fan. Um, <laughs> the one where uh, it was the previous doctor, it was this doctor, Bowtie Doctor. Okay. Um, where he, every year, comes and takes the woman out of the cold storage. Oh, and it's fun. the one that's on the, based on the Christmas Carol. Yes, basically. Yeah. And the shark is like pulling oh. the sled at the end. My okay. least favorite. That one. I, What's your the, favorite? Uh, actually, right now my favorite is probably this one, the one, the snowman, just because. Not we, this one. Not counting this one. Pick another one. Um. Uh, 
and not say the wardrobe, the doctor, the mother, and the whiny children. Because I, I like that one. Not my favorite. Um, I would probably say... Oh. Which one was Donna's Christmas? Album? Runaway Bride, which I'll say this. I hated it at first. Because I thought she was really, really abrasive, but when she came back from Partners in Crime, I loved Partners in Crime. And then actually, after watching her entire season and then going back just recently to watch Runaway Bride, it is much better now because yes. we have more history with the character. And we know how it's going to unfold. And unravel. Exactly. The episode with Do Doctor Don, and he's been poisoned with the arsenic, oh. and they're running around the kitchen. He's like, "I need this. I need that. I need something salty." She's like, "Salt." He's like, "Too salty." Yeah, the Agatha Christie one. Yeah, that was very. Good. I need a shock. I need a shock. And, uh, yeah, that was great. That was I love that episode. That was very good, but not a Christmas episode. No. So, so um, because you are not, you know, the, the Uber fan, the human fan, yeah, the human fan. What are you expecting, or what do you want out of the 50th anniversary of Doctor Who? I want to laugh. I want to cry. I want little homages to all. I want to see like some Aztec painting in the background. I want to see like I want a canon reference to like a black hole being stitched. You don't have to say canon because I know there's copyright Picasso. But they, they got it back. They're fine. Oh, they did. They, they can, that, that's the reason why K9 appeared in the last season of Sarah Jane Adventures regularly because. They got it all worked out. Good, good. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. I would just like to see little homages to like the key Doctor Who episodes where they, they point out little things. I, I have no expectations for a storyline because I, I don't even want to pretend to imagine what would be good because Moffat is a genius. I'm not worthy. I, I don't even feel worthy to watch some of his episodes. I just want to I just want to embrace it and enjoy it. But I, I love looking for Easter eggs myself. Yeah. I, pointed out, and I love that. I want to see all that kind of stuff. And I'll say my, my favorite Easter egg right now at the moment was in the snowman. And this is one reason why I, I love the snowman so much. Um, I'm a huge uh, Patrick oh, Crowder fan. Great, my husband yeah. had a great idea for the for what he wanted to yeah. see in the 50s. He's not here, but I'll, I'll go ahead and use his idea. He thinks, because you know how I'm always complaining that I want um, I want to know what happened, what the doctor did to blow up Gallifrey and why he's the last time yeah. more. Glenn thinks that there, the doctor did that he didn't destroy, he's not the last time more. There, there, he didn't blow up Gallifrey, that there was an incident where Whatever this incident was, and that Gallifrey has put itself in one of these Star Trek space time continuum loops, mm -hmm. and that it's just like in a holding pattern in, in the in the in the tubey thing. And that and he would like to see in the fiftieth episode right at the end of it to hear like the TARDIS sound of yeah. and then Gallifrey boom up here back in its beautiful red orbiness. Well see the thing is is a lot of people think that Gallifrey actually might be better again. Because people forget that big, because Big Bang Two reset the entire universe and a lot of this stuff it did a lot of this stuff that happened in, in the first universe didn't carry over because like in big like in the other universe Cybermen had been wiped out that's the reason why they had to bring over the cyber Cybermen which I absolutely hate but now we're getting the original Cybermen back Neil, Neil Gaiman's writing an episode of the new Cybermen and they've evolved yeah they've evolved a little further on in the design which that's one of the things I always like about, about the Cybermen you can see an evolution in what they look like as more and more of their they remove more and more of the human aspect which is their funny body because parts. Cybermen being robots evolve whereas other species yeah. which are biological don't evolve yeah. yes um but yeah, no, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the Williams episode. I'm looking forward to the uh, journey to the center of the TARDIS, where we get to see the TARDIS be interior. Because I want to see the swimming pool. Yeah, what I want, what I want to see in the 50th, honestly, I would love to see all the various TARDISes. I would like to see the various TARDIS console rooms. I think those would be easy things to recreate. You would have to recreate them. I'm yeah, sure. they don't exist anymore. I mean, because um, when they did Curse of the Fatal Death, they actually used a fan-built uh, TARDIS console for that that oh, special uh, because they didn't have a thing, and time was so short they didn't have time to build something. So they were like, they, they got the best fan one, and they used the hat. But yeah, I mean, I want to see little things like that, like you were saying. I want I want homage, but I also want a, just an amazing story. Oh, that we're gonna get an amazing story. That's a gimme. I, I, I totally believe that. Oh. Do you want to hear the new rumor? Okay, because we haven't we haven't talked about this on air yet at all. Because uh, we were saving a lot of this for MissyCon, but I'll give you this: there's a new rumor going around. Um, actually, 
what was stated was that Smith, which shocked me, was going to go at least one year or two years after the 50th anniversary. Oh, good. That's what was said. Now there's a new rumor. There's a new rumor that that was a lie, possibly. No. And that he's regenerating during or at the end of the 50th anniversary no. special. No. You lie. I'm not Why? lying. Why is he regenerating? Do you know? I'm I, just not saying. Just whisper. Uh, but yeah, that's that's a new rumor that's going around. That's a rumor, and that's a damn lie. It's a lie. Matt Smith's gonna be here for years. He's my favorite doctor, and I love him. And Poland loves him. And I don't care what people in New Zealand think. <laughs> Um, so, is there anything else you want to say about uh, Dr. Hugh, your time on Gallifrey Private Radio this past year? I have greatly enjoyed going to the conventions and being on this because this has certainly expanded my Who uh, my universe. Because I really did think that I was like the only person who liked Dr. Who until I met you, and then I thought now there's upwards to four of us in the country. I really did think, and then it, you introduced me, and you're like, oh no, and you open this door, and it was like that scene in the Good Willy Wonka yeah. and Chocolate Factory where Gene Wilder opens the door and it's a fantasy candy land, yeah. and that's what it was like being on Gallifrey Pirate Radio with you. And I thank you for that oh. very, very much. I had the Gene Wilder song. Yeah. And yeah. And you know, I gotta say, over this past year, you know, I've actually worked with you professionally now as an editor, and you were just honestly, you're one of those editors that actually gets me. And is, a, and, and, and is able to deal with you know, my dyslexia and stuff like that. But no, I mean, we really mesh well together. We do. We do. Um, tea, we do. Because he pretty much does what I tell him to do. Yeah. That's what makes it. That's what makes a good author. Do what your editor tells you to yeah, do. Yeah. Because they want to give me money. So yes, yeah, so I'm gonna do what they tell me to do. I want to pay you. Yes. Right. I want to make your story better, so we make money. Yes. Do what your editor tells you to do. Exactly. Yeah. Words to live by. And now you know. And knowing's half the battle. Gee. Doctor Who! Doctor Who, we've already broken up copyright. Yeah, I know, we, yeah, we've already done that. <laughs> so, uh, this is uh, GPR, our, our little mini episode paper from uh, What the Hell God. Uh, signing off. Peace. Bye.